There are a whole bunch of principles of superposition in different fields of science and engineering, but the one in structural geology is one of the simplest to understand. So if you have a bunch of sedimentary strata that have been deposited like this flat on top of each other, then the principle of superposition states that the ones on the top are going to be younger, the ones at the bottom are going to be older. It's that simple. It's pretty intuitive, actually. You know, you'd think that the stuff that you're standing on, right, would be younger than the stuff that's deep and closer to the inner layers of the earth, right? And that's, of course, all because of gravity. When something gets deposited because things have to abide by the earth's gravitational field, it gets pulled down towards the lowest point it can reach. It starts to stratify, you know, all the sedimentary processes, compaction, cementation, and then another layer gets deposited on top of it. And of course, that means that you keep on building up and up and up until the youngest layer ends up at the very top, the surface, the stuff you're going to be standing on. So if we were to do this really simple picture here, now if you're ever going to be mapping something, don't expect, unless it's a very small section of the earth, right? Don't expect it to look quite like this, but the youngest then, of course, is going to be A, followed by B directly beneath it, followed by C, and finally D at the bottom there is the oldest. And these are all, like I said, very simple sedimentary strata sandstone and siltstone, mudstone, or shale or something. Now the principle of superposition also can apply to other select scenarios such as these two features that I'll show you here. These should hopefully look familiar. The one on the left is a syncline, the one on the right is an anticline. The way I remember it is anticline kind of forms, you know, you can think of it as an A shape here, right? The, uh, the crest of the A there might draw the little imaginary line. A for anticline, the other one is the syncline. And you know, folded strata can look intimidating, but you just gotta think, okay, with the syncline, the oldest has to be at the fringes, the edges of this fold here. Why? Well, because look at the center. The center of it is up at the top. This layer here, I didn't label them here, but let's just call that layer A at the very top. That's gotta be the youngest, because it indeed was deposited Right, because it indeed is on top of all the others, which means it had to have been deposited after, and then the folding took place. The anticline, conversely, if you look at it, the oldest must be at the very center. The youngest ones are on top here, which means that they're going to end up being pushed kind of out to the fringes of the fold. You can kind of think of it maybe as it builds up like a mountain and then they slide down due to gravity. Of course, that's not actually what happens, but it kind of helps you visualize and remember, okay, anticline, oldest in the center, syncline, youngest in the center. But of course, there are limitations to the principle of superposition. With something that simple, it can't apply to all scenarios, right? Well, no. So here's maybe a little bit more of a realistic scenario. I didn't take this from anywhere specifically. This is just a theoretical situation on the Earth, and this looks like a bit of a fun relative dating challenge, right? But you know, you're gonna have things all over the place. You're gonna have faulting going on, multiple faults probably cross-cutting each other, creating different up-thrown and down-thrown planes. You're gonna have igneous intrusions messing things up. You're gonna have inclusions of rocks within each other. And that's where other laws of relative dating like cross-cutting relationships, inclusions, intrusions, things like those come in handy. You know, there are probably some unconformities in here too. I just didn't bother drawing them in. But the point is, even in something like this, the principle of superposition is great for your basics, right? Like if we just look at the top here, even with the fault cutting it, we'd say, well, A is on top of B, and it looks like there's some fault in here, but it was applied evenly across all the strata. It doesn't look like there's any preferential folding or deformation across any of these. So I can definitely say that A is younger than B, and then B is younger than C, and then C is younger than D, and you can kind of work your way down from there. And so really the key to a lot of relative dating is breaking it down into steps, right? You know, we'd start this problem by looking at things like what can we identify with the principle of superposition? What relative ideas of these ages can we get with our simplest tool? And then we'll start working into the other ones. You know, of course, get into what's this igneous intrusion doing? What are the faults doing? And make further judgments from there. But that's a simp the principle of superposition when it can be used and 
really it should be used in almost all relative dating. Like I said, even if something like this limits it from being used entirely, you should expect to have that in your toolbox. And fortunately for all of us, it's a very simple tool to have to keep around.